Good morning, everyone, and welcome to NDD's webinar um, detailing the 2019 spirometry update. We are so happy that you guys have jumped on with us this morning. If you are watching live and in person, thank you for taking time out of your day um, to learn about this really exciting update to the NDD product line. If you are viewing this as a recording, um, Thank you also again for registering and taking the time to come back and catch up with what's new and exciting at NDD. Um, there is a question um, tab on your GoToWebinar toolbar. So if you have any questions that come up during the webinar, feel free to type those in there. And at the end of the presentation, we will hop on and address those questions. All right, let's get started. So the 2019 spirometry update, if you are involved in the pulmonary function world at all, this is something that I'm sure that a lot of you have been hearing about. So the 2019 spirometry standard, um, we have applied this to all of our current product line, and this is a downloadable update um, for your existing NDD devices that are currently being manufactured. So the NDD, um, excuse me, the 2019 spirometry standard, we're going to be able to perform, evaluate, and report forced spirometry maneuvers according to the new ATS ERS spirometry standard the 2019 update. Um, some of the high points of this update is a more detailed evaluation of both FVC and FEV1. The FVC and the FEV1 are, in, are individually evalu evaluated for acceptability and usability with a detailed ana analysis of past and failed criteria. The quality and grading reporting, um, the FEC and the FEV1 are graded independently now with possible scores of A all the way to F. Actual values are reported first, followed by lower limits of normal, and then that percent predicted value. There's also been an improvement to the SVC test, the slow vital capacity test. The stability of tidal breathing is now being analyzed according to this new standard. Some other things on the NDD side, we did include a flow sensor firmware update to um, optimize um, and enhance the performance of that flow sensor with this new 2019 update. And then also we do have brand new animation incentives. As a lot of you are aware, when Windows um, stopped using Adobe Flash Player. We lost our incentives for a while, but they are back and we actually have a, um, a really new cute incentive um, that I'm excited to show show you all here in just a little bit. So I wanted to point out NDDMed.com. There is an entire resource there on these ATS ERS 2019 standards. You can visit our website at any time for all of the materials surrounding this release. You can update your software there. You can look at the differences between the 2005 versus the 2019 standards. Um, you can view the recording from this webinar. There's frequently asked questions, release detailed technical release notes, and then also those firmware release notes as well. So this really is a good resource if you're looking to update, if you're on the fence of if you should update, if you should not update to the new standard, this is a great starting place to get all of those resources in one location. All right, so the update applies again to all of the NDD current product line. So I'm gonna kind of toggle back and forth a little bit um, when I talk about Easy One Connect software, the Easy On PC, and then the Pro A Pro Lab. And then I'm also going to speak to the Easy One Air as well, just because as you know, the screen looks a little bit different, utilities are laid out a little bit differently. So I wanna make sure that um, all devices are covered and your questions get answered. So NDD has created the option to perform evaluate and report the FEC, FVL test according to the new 2019 standards, or you can choose to stay with the previous 2005 version. Once your software is updated, it will actually prompt you on the restart which option you want to go with. If you're not sure, you can always come back in on the device. You can see um, the Easy One Connect software, the Easy On PC, and the Easy One Pro and Pro Lab. You can go into that utilities menu and go into the test, FVC, FVL, and choose your desired applied spirometry standard. So the same thing on the Easy One Air, you have the option to either move to 2019 or go back to 2005. And that's gonna be located under the Tools, Spirometry, and then the Settings menu. It's gonna be the very first tab within that, um, within that tile. And it's gonna have you choose either the ATS ERS 2005 or the 2019. 
All right, so into a little bit more of the details of what has changed. So the evaluation of FEC and FEV1 with spirometry 2019. So on the first step, we have represented the overall trial with these smiley faces. Stoplight smileys is kind of my new nickname for them. So we do have our green, our yellow, and our red smiley. And you're gonna see down at the bottom of the screen, each of those trials is going to get a smiley telling us what criteria has been met and what has not been met. So with the green smiley face, it indicates both FEV1 and FEC have been acceptable. Um, the yellow indicates both parameters are at least usable, but not both of them acceptable. And then with the red smiley face, you'll see that it, neither parameter is going to be usable for your report. The same thing on um, when we go into, you'll see when I do the demonstration later, you can individually click on each of those trials and get a very, very detailed breakdown of why you got the stoplight smiley that you got. Um, in the example here, we have an acceptable FEV1 and then a usable FVC. And on the failed criteria, past criteria, you can see an, a very detailed breakdown of why you got the stoplight smiley that you got. So clicking the smile reveals each detailed evaluation and this includes that analysis of the pass fail and then also recommended manual check. So how do we make it right? Um, it is possible to override the acceptability and usability um, if you're if you desire, but like I always train, you know, speak with your providers, let them know what's going on, and then you can go in and mark acceptable or unacceptable as needed. So this is essentially the same breakdown, but on the easy one air, you'll see that the screen looks a little bit different um, than what you're used to. You're still gonna get your stoplight smileys. It's still gonna give you that detailed breakdown of what went wrong and what went right for every single trial. Here's that detailed breakdown on the Easy One Air device. You can click the smiley and it will reveal that detailed FVC and FV1 analysis um, and criteria for improved suggestions. Um, you can use the toggles, those arrows down on the bottom of your Easy One Air to go back and forth and see the details on those individual tri test trials. Again, on this device, it is also possible to override usability and acceptability. You can see the detailed breakdown and the description of the problem and improvement suggestion. All right, I am going to go ahead and switch over to my Easy One Connect software just so that you can see what it looks like to do the FVC test live on the Easy One PC device. So let me get switched over here. I'm just gonna do a quick FVC test. And you will get to see a little preview of my new favorite incentive, which is our elephant. All right, so here's the test. Awesome. So I love the elephant. I'm not going to lie. I think it's adorable. And I think especially our pediatric patients are going to love it. Um, the mom elephant sprays off the baby elephant, um, indicating how hard and fast that patient needs to blast out. So that you can see a little bit, diff a few of those differences here on the report page. You can see down in the lower left-hand corner, you have your stoplight smiley. If I click on that, it's going to open up that detailed breakdown of that trial. Um, if I had failed criterias, criteria or anything that didn't meet that acceptability criteria, it's going to show up in that failed criteria. Um, obviously, everything on that trial was good, so everything is in the past criteria. I'll do one more trial for you guys, and I will actually click over to the new and improved birthday cake so that you guys can see that one. Excellent. So the birthday cake is back. We're very excited to be able to have our animated incentives back on our software platforms. Um, you can see again the stoplight smiley down at the bottom. You'll be able to click on that, get that detailed breakdown that will just help your patient along during their test. Okay, I'm going to switch back over. And we will keep going. 
So the quality grading with Spirometry 2019, how is it different? Again, I'm gonna toggle back and forth between the Easy One Connect platform and then the Easy One Air. So with the 2019 standards, the FEV1 and the FVC are graded separately as specified by the standard. Quality grading is shown on the report as well. Actual values are first in bold, followed by the lower limits of normal, the Z-score, and then the predicted columns. The Z-score and the predicted column can be configured as hidden in the utilities if your provider prefers. The calibration check error tolerance has also been reduced from 3.5 to 3%. Here is the same um, slides looking at the Easy One Air now. So again, the FEV1, the FEC are graded separately per the 2019 standard. And the quality grade is shown here on the Easy One Air screen. Just like on the um, other devices, the actual values are shown first in bold, followed by the lower limits of normal, the Z-score, and then the predicted columns. The Z-score and the Z-score graph is now available on the Easy One Air. It wasn't before, so we're excited to be able to include that on our Easy One Air reports as well. So some other general improvements with this 2019 um, spirometry update software update is that FV, SVC, the slow vital capacity improvement. Now this applies both to the 2005 standard if you choose to stay there or the 2019 standard. So as specified by the 2019 standard, the stability of the tidal breathing is now analyzed. Um, the ERV and the IC will be reported along with the VC only if that tidal volume stability is achieved within 10 tidal breaths, so 10 regular breaths. The VC maneuver may begin after 10 breaths, even if spirometry has not been achieved. In this case, though, you're only going to get that vital capacity, <clears throat> excuse me, that vital capacity on the report. Again, here are those brand new incentive animations. We have the birthday cake and the elephants. Um, as you see on the bottom of your screen, this feature is not available on the older version, the V4 Pro, Lab, Pro and Pro Lab, but they still have their old incentives. The firmware sensor, up, or excuse me, the flow sensor firmware update. This firmware update for the Easy On PC and the Pro Pro Lab is integrated into the Easy One Connect software. This update will be automatically triggered once the flow sensor is connected after you update your software. We do highly recommend installing the new firmware to have the best experience with the 2019 update, and the firmware has no update has no impact on your existing patient data. Again. Pro Pro Lab V4 users, this does not, um, you guys will not see this firmware update um, when you guys update your software. Some other general improvements the parameter FEV1 VC is now available on the Easy One Air. We have to have an SVC maneuver 12 hours um, prior, within 12 hours prior to performing that force maneuver. And the Easy One Air now provides a warning mes message at the start of a regular test if an order is pending for the same patient. Some general improvements for the Easy One Pro and Pro Lab, things that are specific to this device. Um, we implemented the correction of the DLCO predicted value um, by the GLI in October of 2020. Hemoglobin values are now shown on the reports and implemented calculated predicted values for ERV and um, IC. I know that's um, something that a lot of people have been waiting for, so we're excited about that. So the GLI predicted values for DLCO were corrected by GLI back in October of 2020. There had been a small error in the equations which required a correction of DLCO, DLCO VA, and also the VA predicted data sets. Um, NDD has now implemented these corrections into our current software release according to that up updated publication by the European Respiratory Journal. Hemoglobin values are now shown on the report. Manually entered hemoglobin is now displayed on the DLCO and the summary reports as a default. I know that's something, again, that a lot of customers have to go in and do manually, so we're excited now that that is going to show on the reports. Lung volumes, calculated predicted values for ERV and IC. The predicted value and percent 
uh, predicted value are now displayed and calculated for ERV and IC under the condition that predicted values for FRC, RV, and TLC are available in the applied reference study for DLCO and lung volumes. So ERV, we have to have that FRC and the RV from the same source. Same with ICE, with the inspiratory capacity. The TLC and the FRC need to come from the same source test. Some technical notes. Everybody's favorite, I know. So for users that are still using a Windows 7 operating system, if you have issues, please reach out to um, both international support or um, US support. Um, if you are Windows 8, 10, there's no special requirements for you. Um, but again, that service pack might need to be installed for older um, Windows operating systems. So if there's any questions at all on that, please reach out to our support and that's something that we can walk you through. For Easy One Pro, um, Pro Lab V4 users, um, you'll notice on our website that there are two different updates for the Easy One Pro. One for those V4 users, one for the newer V5 users. Um, so again, the, v, the older V4 users, you absolutely can update to the 2019 standards. Um, your animations will be unchanged from how they were previously, and you won't have that flow sensor update. But Absolutely, you are still eligible for this update. Just pay attention to your serial number. Maybe have that on hand when you go to the website to do the update, just to be sure that you update, or excuse me, download the correct update for your device. The version history the soft of software downloads can be found on our website under the software tab, um, just so that you can see um, what version you're currently on versus the, the most current version. As far as the presentation goes, that is everything that I have to present to you all today. I'm going to go ahead and click my camera back on. I was having a little bit, um, I was having a little bit of lag in my internet, so I left it off for a few minutes just so that I wasn't um, freezing on you guys during the presentation. But I'm going to go ahead and have Bianca hop on and look through any questions that you guys might have. I also have Ninja from Product de Development here um, to help answer any of these technical questions that you guys might have about this update, the software update, the firmware update. Um, so thank you guys so much for joining us. If you still have questions, now is the time. Enter them over in that questions tab. And Bianca, are you there? I am. Awesome. Thank you so much, Wonderful. Jamie. Um, so, so far we only have one question and um, this particular question is from Sheena asking about the Z-score and if you could explain what the Z-score is. Sure. Ninja, do, would you want to take that one? Yes. Hello, everyone. Uh, so Z-score is um, a, just a general statistic concept. It's nothing new to spirometry. Basically, it uh, says how many, so it takes your measurement value and, it, and tells you how many uh, standard deviation your way from the, from the predicted. So basically, it's, in, it's uh, the, the advantage of this score is that uh, it's uh, it's independent of of age and uh, um, all of those uh, demographic good demographic parameters. It just tells you how how many uh, how many standard deviation your way from the from the predicted. So if you are plus one point something d. Uh, this score, then you are you are pretty good. And then if you are minus uh, uh, that that means that you are you are lower than the um, than the than the predicted. So it's a it's a statistic concept. Um, and if you if you're interested in that, that definitely uh, go uh, Wikipedia and there's a very uh, detailed um, uh, explanation of uh, of this statistic concept. It's nothing it's nothing particular to spirometry. It's a general statistic concept. Right. It's just a really, you know, and it's a really good visual for, you know, maybe providers that aren't as familiar with reading spirometry because it really does just show you on a linear graph um, where that patient would plot, you know, better or worse versus their predicted value, lower limits of normal. All right. Bianca, do we have Perfect. any other questions? Yeah, sure. So a few more questions are, are coming in here. So we have two um, questions regarding the use of the software and the older Easy One Pluses. So will this update work on those devices or should they be replaced? So a few questions about the new software on the Easy One Plus devices. 
Right. And unfortunately, the EZ1 Plus will not be able to receive the 2019 update. Um, those devices are fantastic. I actually use them clinically um, when I was working as a bedside RT. Um, you know, those devices, um, they have been replaced by the EZ1 Air over the last several years. And at this, um, no, we do not have plans to have any more software releases for those EZ1 Plus devices. All right, perfect. Thanks, Jamie. Um, a few more here. So we have a question from Heather uh, about toggling back and forth between 2005 and 2019. Um, in your opinion, is there a reason to continue to use the 2005 guidelines? Not, you know, not necessarily. And Ninja, you might have a good answer for this as well. Um, you know, the test is performed the exact same way. We coach it the exact same way. You know, the actual trial grading and then that interpretation is what really has changed. Um, you know, providers always take a little bit to catch up with, um, you know, whatever new publications are out there. It always takes a while for everyone to follow suit and really understand um, how to read new standards and new information. Um, but there really isn't a reason necessarily um, that you would want to stay with 2005. Um, the only thing that I can think of off the top of my head is maybe if you're a, um, a research customer or you're in the middle of a clinical trial and you would want to keep your data consistent, that would be um, an instance where I would say to stay with the standard that you're currently on until that clinical trial has been completed. Um, on the clinical side though, I don't really, um, I, I couldn't think of a reason why you would not want to go ahead and update to the 2019 standard. Ninja, do you have any insight on that? Yeah, actually, I totally go, agree with what you've said. And maybe just one more hint, um, if you want you switch to, um, from 2005 to 2019, and you will have no um, impact on the existing data set. So it will not update existing data. Um, yeah, so it no, has no impact on existing data. Um, so me, I think for data consistency, if you want a, a data set, say, for a period of time that they that they are evaluated with the, the same, using the same method, and that things, then you probably want to stay in 2005 so that all your tests done in this in this period are uh, evaluated in the same way. And um, but other, other than that, I don't see why, um, anyone would want to uh, stay with 2005 standard but it depends on probably your 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 I mean, your guidelines and your sops yeah all right perfect thank you um a couple more here we have a question from hannah um who works in a hospital setting and she said they're using a very old version of software are there any risks to updating not necessarily risk because again, all of our patient data is going to be maintained um, on an older device. I always just say to allow a little bit more time because the larger your patient database is, the longer it's going to take to update in my experience. Um, if you have any issues updating with an older device that has a really heavy uh, patient database, I know our tech support has encountered a few, um, especially Easy One Air customers, where they have had to back up their patient database on their PC, just because the update is large, their uh, device is so full of patient information that just to make room for the software update, they did have to back up patient data. So that would be really the only concern um, that I could think of is just a large patient database may need to be moved off to accept the new um, update. And just it, even if it you have room for both your existing patient database and the new uh, software, you might just want to allow yourself a little extra time um, for that update. It's not something that you'd be able to do five minutes before going to see a patient. All right, wonderful, awesome. Um, so I see one more question here from Kathleen. Um, she's using the Easy on PC with filters. Her question is, has the flow sensor update been adjusted with the disposable filter in place? So, as you guys are aware, we do we did have an update for the Easy One Pro and Pro Lab to adjust for that filter. Um, that possible filter deviation. Um, and it's really because of where the mouth, where the filter is placed on the mouthpiece. On the Easy One Pro Pro Lab, the filter is actually on the patient side. So the flow would have to pass through the filter before the flow sensor makes its measurement. On the Easy On um, P3 
PC, um, Easy One Connect, um, Easy One Air, um, all of those, the filter is placed on the back side, the non-patient side of the device. So the reading is taken before it hits the filter. So at this time, we do not have a software update for that. Um, I don't know if that is something that we are working on in the future just to assist with um, facilities that do cal checks or um, you know things like that but with all of the testing that we did when we first implemented the filter solution we did not see a change in accuracy with that filter on the back side so that software has not been adjusted again on the easy one pro pro lab there is a filter adjustment because of where that mouthpiece is placed um, in relation to the flow sensor so I know that was a very long explanation for your question, um, but not at this time, um, just because of where the filter sits on those devices. All right, perfect. Thanks, Jamie. A few more coming in here. Um, I have a question about old data, asking how do they delete old data on patients that they don't need anymore? Um, so that is a little bit device dependent, um, depending on whether you're using the Easy One Air, Easy On PC, Easy One Pro Pro Lab. Um, so if you have specific questions on how to delete patient data, to export patient data, um, please give tech support a call and they can walk you through that. It would be a very long explanation to go through all of the device platforms and how to do that specifically on each one. Um, so we're here to help you if that is a question um, to get old data off your device that you don't need anymore um, so that you don't have to go one at a time in your device and delete those patients off please give tech support a call they would be happy to walk through that process um, to your uh, specific to your device with you all right wonderful perfect um, a few more here so um, this is a little bit of a longer question but in terms of the FE, fev1 predicted value what's a good percentile value to focus on so for example 48 percent versus 80 percent predicted okay um and ninja you can hop in so i think that i understand the um so looking at the individual parameters are we looking at what is a good percent predicted bianca is that kind of what we think is um to whomever just um uh submitted that question if you could clarify a little bit more um that would be great right because in far as far as interpretation versus you know what parameters to look at um we just i just want to make sure that we answer that question correctly ninja did you um do you have any advice on yeah, that while we wait for some clarification? Yeah, there are actually ATS ERS uh, guidelines also on interpretation. And uh, in the industry, there are actually two methods to how to how to interpret the data. And one is to look at uh, compare your result to a present, predict, pre present predicted. And the other way would be to compare yourself to uh, the raw data to a lower level of normal. So there are two camps of uh, opinions and uh, one camp is saying that um, you're, I don't remember exact number, but uh, it's, um, I think it's 80%. And um, if you are, if you're below 80% of, of the predicted, and then uh, you are considered, um, quote unquote, not normal. Um, that's, that's one, that's one um, opinion. And the other side of the opinion is that you should actually uh, compare with the lower level of normal only if, you're lower than lower level of normal, then as the name implies that you're quote unquote not, uh, not getting normal value. Um, so it really depends on, I, I think both, um, yeah, both um, camps have, have their, have their have put, forth, put forth a good argument. I think this is something that, uh, yeah, I think the institution and um, should, um, or the, the physician should decide which, uh, which idea to follow. But we do we do right. uh, in our software we do show both we show you predicted present predicted and LLN so um, it's in the end your decision to to take uh, which uh, how do you uh, interpret the data right and all of that combined you know you also have to look at that patient data that patient history you know I always use myself and as an example you know my normal is I'm an asthmatic I have a really really good spirometry on most days. Um, but I can still look normal on bad days just because I am so used to doing this test. So all of those things, provider preference on you know which method of thought um, they like to go to percent predicted versus lower limits of normal, and then also taking into um, consideration that patient, that individual patient and their history. 
All right, perfect. Just a cup. Do you have time for a couple more questions, Jamie? Maybe another one more question. Yeah, let's we're right at 930. So I, I want to make sure that we're good stewards of our time. So let's just do one more question. And then if you guys have questions after the fact, you will get that follow up email from NDD with my contact information on it. Feel free to shoot any questions um, that might come up after the fact over and we'll get them answered for you. All right, perfect. So a few of the questions are in regards to filters. So a few people are asking about the cost for filters um, and where they can be purchased. So um, Kathleen, I think you're one of those and Adriana, I can reach out to you guys separately and send you some information on filters and where to purchase. Absolutely. Um, let's see here. Uh, yeah, I think, oh, actually I have, I think this should be, we could have this be our last question. Um, what was the last ATS update for the Easy One Air or the hospital handheld device? Um, the last ATS, like the actual standard update would have been the 2005, um, unless I'm mistaken. Um, there hasn't been an, uh, a standard update from at the actual ATS ERS organization since that time. Um, as far as software firmware updates go, um, there we provide those multiple times a year, whether they are um, anything from bug fixes to um, new features you know last year we implemented you know several updates for the pro to get those filters online um, to get different reporting capabilities online so NDD as a company does provide several software updates you know two to three a year that can be available for one reason or another um, those updates are always available on our website um, if you're subscribed to our newsletter your device is registered you get emails from us letting um, letting you know um, when those updates are available. But as far as those spirometry standards, um, those are far less frequent and the most up to date until recently was that 2005 standard. Wonderful, perfect, Jamie. And again, like I noted, I, I have a few names here that have questions about filters and I um, can send you an email separately with that information. But otherwise, I think, um, I think that's all, Jamie. Thank you so much. All right. Well, thank you guys so much for hopping on. Again, you'll get that follow-up email with our contact information within the next day or so with the recording of this presentation. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to me. Reach out to International Tech Support, U.S. Tech Support. Um, we're here to assist you, and uh, we are here to support you in this update and implementing this new standard into your practice. So again, thank you so much, and have a wonderful day, and we'll see you all again soon. Thank you.